Okay, guys, so springtime, it's getting warmer. We need a reason to get outside right now. Fishing's getting good, so let's learn how to fish today. So why would you want to fish? What's so great about fishing? So it's a good way to spend time with your friends. Now, fortunately, this time, you've got to keep your six feet distance. Social distancing is always good. Family bonding, maybe this time it's get away from family. Need a little bit of space. We understand. It's relaxing. Get free food. Get outdoors and enjoy that nice air and wildlife conservation. Now, a lot of people don't think about fish when they think conservation. They think elk and deer, but fish need management just as much. So now, your first question is, where the heck do I go fishing? So, this is depending on what species you want to catch. Muskie are in some places, and bluegill are everywhere. So places you can go are the local Finns Lakes, which are lakes close to neighborhoods and major areas. Louisville has five Finn Lakes. So Dane Balsman, the biologist, will be in later this week, and he can discuss more of that with you. So creeks, rivers, private ponds all make great fisheries. And if you still can't find a place close, go to fw.ky.gov. Right there on our website, we've got an awesome application that'll tell you everywhere in the state to fish with the GPS locations. So, so now when you go out, we gotta be safe. Safety is everything. So let someone know when and where you're going fishing. Now you don't have to tell them the secret spot, but just give them an idea of where you're going. That way they can know, keep you safe. Dress according to the weather. Weather's kind of strange right now. It's cold in the morning, hot in the afternoon. You don't want to wear your winter jacket when it's 90 degrees outside, okay? So we suggest sunscreen, sunglasses, hat if you're choosing. We like ball caps here. So be cautious of obstacles and people. That includes trees, rocks, mud, other people who are too close. And this right here is one of my favorite things. Hooks are very sharp. Now, hook will catch a fish. It'll catch you just as easy, I promise. So know the forecast, because we don't want to be out there holding a giant six-foot fishing pole in a lightning storm, right? So now, next, water levels. Now, water level really only matters when you're in streams, creeks, and rivers. Because water goes up, it gets a little more dangerous, so we need to be aware of that. Now, regulations. Since we are managed, you need your 2020 fishing license. We sell years for $23 and a one day for $7. So if you just want to try it out, get you a day one. Go try it out. So now, anywhere you go, you'll see a nice big brown sign that tells you all the fishing regulations for that lake. Now, if you do not see one of these brown signs, check in the fishing guide, which is right here. These can be found at Walmart, tackle stores, online. It'll tell you everything you need to know, all the regs and requirements. Now, as you can see on this sign, it'll say rainbow trout and your daily limits. That's how many fish you can take home that day of that species. Now, the size limit's none. So a one-inch trout to a 20-inch trout you can take home. Now, you slide on down to a largemouth bass of one. You can have one largemouth bass with a length of 15 inches or greater. Now this changes from every body of water, so check the guide, and if you can't see it posted anywhere, it goes by the statewide regulations which cover all water not specifically noted as different. And if you're absolutely unsure, call our number right here and our info center staff will take care of you. So now let's go over rod and reels. So, Zach here will hold these rods and reels for us. We'll start with the push button. Okay. So, I'll we'll start here with our basic. This is a push button or spin cast. So most people start at, you know, most people start with these with kids, nice Snoopy and Barbie poles. So, you got your rod, which varies in length, your reel, button, your reel handle, and the butt. So now, this is what I would consider beginner. So this is a push button. And then the next, when I can do the next level, oops, is a spinning rod. Now this one's a little bit different. It has a bail, which is this metal bar. So instead of a button, you have to use your finger to hold it. But we'll go over casting here in just a second. So other than that, all the parts are the same. This one is held upside down. And the glory of this, if you're left-handed, you can have the reel on the left side, or you can move it to the right side, wherever you're comfortable with. And then the most complicated, what we consider advanced, is the bait caster. This is what a lot of your pros will use out there on the professional bass fishing circuits. A little bit more complicated to use, but not impossible. And catch just as many fish on this as you would the beginner push button. So, now, 
kind of got an idea of what rods and reels we're dealing with here. So to catch a fish, what do you got to have? So you got to have a hook. Now obviously there's no fish here big enough to eat this hook. This is a nice demo hook. We don't have sharks or alligators. So not we're going to teach you today, and Zach will come over here and be my nice fishing pole, is the improved clinch. Here's a little demonstration up here. And if you have trouble seeing, YouTube is a great resource for fishing knots. And if you just don't like this knot, YouTube has about a thousand. So you have two ends of your line. So you've got your standing end, which is attached to your pole. So Zach's going to be my nice fishing pole here. And you have your tag end, which is free with no hook. So you take your hook, so you have your eye, the hook, shank, and the barb, and your point. So this is a sharp point, so be careful with that. Take your tag end, run it through the eye. Give yourself plenty of slack. You can always cut off extra, but you can't add more. And then you're going to wrap your tag end over your standing five times. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Now you can do seven, eight, 12, whatever you want, but five is a good round number. So now that you've wrapped that, if you'll see above your eye, you've created another hole. So take that tag end, run it through that. And now you can see you've made another hole right here. Take that tag end back through there. Now, at this point, you want to moisten this a little bit. You can spit on it, dip it in water, and then you'll start to pull down. As you can see, it'll all start to stack up real nice. But the rope will cooperate. And that is an improved clinch. Now, this will stack much easier with fishing line because it's smooth, where this is a little rough which is just nice demo purposes. So try that at home. And once you think you've got that mastered, have somebody stand in front of you with a fan, turn that on, and that's real life conditions. So, Zach and tie that. Now, so now we've got hook on our line, right? So what's next? So we suggest you put a sinker on there. Now this is a little bit split shot. This is real light, real, real light. Now these come in all different shapes and sizes. Like I've got one right here. This is a banana weight. You can tell it's much heavier. I think this one's probably four ounces. I mean, that's way a lot heavier than that little tiny split shot. So your weight, or your sinker as they're called, is used to keep your bait down in the water column. So if you've got fish that live on the bottom, such as a catfish, you want a heavier weight to keep your bait down on the bottom. But starting out with, these split shots work great. So this one's closed, but you can see it has little wings on the back. So what you'll do is you'll take your pliers, or any kind of tool that you have, go ahead and bit, open it up a little bit. And now it looks like Pac-Man, it's got a mouth, right? So what's gonna happen is you're gonna make Pac-Man eat the line, and then you'll squeeze it down. And then once it's down, you'll take your pliers, and crimp it down some more. Now don't use your teeth, your dentist will not like you for that, I promise. And some of these are made of lead, so it's not something we really wanna eat. So now you got that. Next thing you'll need is a bobber. We got our nice little one here with the Kentucky on it. So these come in all different shapes and sizes as well. So you need to size this according to the size of fish. Now I'm not saying a bigger bobber is going to catch a bigger fish, but this is a bite indicator. So when you get a fish, it'll swim off in one direction or it'll go underwater. And that lets you know you have a bite. So if you got a big bobber and a little fish, he's not going to be able to pull it under. So keep that in mind. Also, the bobber helps you set your depth. So this goes above your sinker and hook. So your hook will be down here like this. And this will help you set how deep you want to fish. Now to put this on, it's a little hard to see. You got this black top here. Put your thumb over that, hold it like this. And if you push out, you can see a little hook come out the bottom. So you'll slide your line on that, clamp that down, flip it over, take your thumb, cover that bottom, and then push down on that. And you'll have another little hook come out that you hook to the top. Now you want it to sit like this, that way the white end stands up. It's fine if the red sits up. If that's what you want, it'll work just as good. So, when it's all said and done, it should look something similar to this. Now, your sinker you can put any position above your hook. We suggest four inches, just a good starting point. That's the glory of fishing. You do it how you want, what works for you that day. It could work this way one day, and the next day the fish won't touch this just because they didn't like it. So adjust as needed. So a little tip I like to do, especially with this bobber, is I'll just hook the bottom on until I get a bite, 
because if I don't, I can just push just a little bit. I can slide it up and down the line really easily. Let's get my depth. And then I can hook the top and then it stays where it's at. So nice little tip there. So now we've got all that on. So now we gotta have bait. So let's go up here, get us some bait. So these are some live bait options. And we suggest live bait to start with. It always works better. So you've got minnows, night crawlers or red worms and wax worms. We suggest wax worms are not slimy. Kids don't get scared of them. It's just a lot easier than worms. And now you can get these at Walmart, any bait stores, or if you wait till it rains, you'll probably have some red worms walking on your driveway. So free bait, free fish, right? So now the best way to put a bait on a hook is imagine hook is your foot and the bait is your sock. So you'll run that on and cover up that entire hook. You don't want a bunch of bait hanging off because then the fish can just eat on that bait and will never get your hook. And you don't need a gob of worms, like I'll use this rope as a worm. You don't want a gob of worms this big trying to catch a little bluegill. His little mouth won't catch it. So here's a good size of a bluegill. He's not gonna be able to eat that, All right? So, so now you've been lucky enough to get out there. You've caught a fish, right? So now what do we do with that fish? So here's the fish you've caught. This is a trout. Nice little demo trout. So you've got him on your hook, and what's he doing? He's just he's flopping. He's scared, wants to get away, right? So we teach the C method. I can see with your hand. I do my offhand, so I have my right hand available. So I'm holding the hook or line above him. C down, and then I'll grab him like this. Now as I come down, most fish, when it hits this back fin right here that has all the spines on it, those will lay down, and now you've got full control of this fish. You're safe, it's safe for the fish. You can take your hand, your pliers, pop your hook out, and then you can decide if I'm gonna stick him in my basket or cooler to take home or let it go. This works really well for all species of fish. Like here's a bigger size bluegill, so here's his spines. So when your pinky hits that, they'll all lay down, and you got full control of them. So now once you've got a fish, we suggest you always use the C method because you never know what kind of fish you've got. Now page 19 of the guides has an excellent fish ID section. And we say that because some fish, especially in this nice big torpedo shape like this, have teeth. So they don't want to stick our hands in their mouths and get bit. And then catfish really have something more of like a sandpaper pad in their mouth. So that's something to watch out for. So now, let's go over some casting. Hopefully we don't hit any lights or anything. So we'll start with the spinning rod because this is probably the most universally used. It's used everywhere from bass fishing circuits, bluegills, saltwater. So I always line this silver part of the bale up with the rod, since we don't have a button or anything. Take your pointer finger, grab the line, pull it towards the rod. Now, take your opposite hand, open the bale, and now this has opened up the spool so the line can come out free. So if I just let go of my finger, my bait and everything's gonna fall on the floor. So. So now it got on the floor. So then you'll close your bell back, you'll start to reel, and it'll retrieve your line. So to cast this one, line it up, pointer finger, open the bell. Now always check behind you to the sides. You come over, and then as you go forward, you just point your finger. Let me close this back. So I'm coming back, checking behind me, no trees or nothing. And as I go forward, I'm just going like this, just pointing. So I'm Point. So essentially you're going to pick up your finger and let go of the line and that's going to cause it to go forward. So just let's see if I can do this just a little bit here. So point. Easy enough. And you flip back over, start reeling. Oh, I caught a big chair. So there's that one. Now the push button works real similar. You just don't have to worry about holding the line or anything like that. So make an L with your hands. Grab it like this. Thumb on the button now. You push the button, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not. Had a little bitty click. That means it's disengaged. Now if I let go of the button, my line falls out again. So you don't want to let go. Essentially like your finger where you pointed. Push, hold your button, check behind you, make sure there's nothing there. And then as you go back, hold on to the button. As you go forward, you let go of the button. So it's a good kind of little when to let go. When your hand comes past your head, pick up your thumb. By the time your reaction kicks in, it'll be a good one. Now, if you're casting and it just does this nice little arc straight up in there and comes back down, 
You let go too early. If you just slam the water or the ground in front of you, you let go too late. So you'll get used to it in practice. You'll catch on to it. Put this back in. So now the next one, and the more difficult to learn, is the bait caster because it does not have any built-in things that stop the line for you. Now this one is a great one to learn on your own with YouTube help because it's going to take some time. It has a button that releases the spool, but there's nothing to hold that spool except for your thumb. So you hold it similar with your L underneath, put it right there. Now I have to hold it with my thumb. Now when I go to cast, I have to put my thumb back on this spool to stop it. If you don't, you're going to have a big mess. So you are the only thing stopping this. So this takes a little bit more time and practice. You'll enjoy it once you master it. Now if you want some casting practice, a cool game is to set a coffee can out in your yard and try to cast into it. It gets your accuracy real good and it's a fun game to play. So now let's do a little bit of fish ID. So there's fish down here on the bottom left. Go on and write in the comments if you know what fish this is. This is a very popular sport fish here in the state. We actually have the record. Okay. This is a smallmouth bass. Okay. This next one right here. Real pretty fish. Cold water fish. This is a rainbow trout. Okay. Zach's got another one back there. How about this guy? He's got whiskers and barbels. This is a channel catfish with a slender body, gray speckles, okay? And all these fish we're showing you are very common in all the fins lakes and lakes around the state. So this guy right here looks real similar to that smallmouth. This is actually a large mouth. He's more of a greenish color. An easy trick, if you're not sure, is the mouth. If the mouth goes past the eye, it's a large mouth. If it stops at the eye, it's the Kentucky Spotted Bass, which is just another type of bass we have. So, I think there's one more. Okay, what about this guy? So this is probably the most common fish you'll ever see and catch. This is a bluegill. So notice, under his gill plate, he's got some bluish color, a little black spot right there. So these fish are real small. These are the ones we used earlier in a little demo. They're very small, but you can catch a bunch of them. They're really good eating. Well, that's all of our fish ID. I hope some of y'all guessed those correctly. So let's do some questions real quick. So we got, how can residents outside of Kentucky fish in Kentucky? So William asked that question. So essentially, you just come into the state, get you a non-resident license, which you can buy online, bait stores. You can even buy them off your phone at home before you come. Go to that website where you can find locations to go fishing and just come on down and fish. Now, right now, I don't think we're allowed to travel out of the state or anything, but it's still a fun place to go fishing. You can fish the Ohio River with an Ohio license, just only in Ohio waters. So it's, all those border waters are kind of strange, but that can, all the info can be found in the guide, and if you're unsure of that, still call on in the info center and they'll help you out. So next question, what is a fly fishing pole? So a fly rod, which is something I have not mastered and did not bring with me, cast very, very light lures. So if you've ever watched Outdoor Channel or any TV where you got them in the mountains, all that big scenery and stuff, and they're making big motions like this with their rod, that's fly gear. That's used to catch trout and catch bass, anything else with them. It's growing in popularity here, but something I have not mastered. Um, can you fish in a creek on the golf course? Good question. So you can fish anywhere you have permission to fish. So if you ask the golf course and they say it's fine, then you're allowed to fish there, but you're still required to have your license. The only time you are not required to have your license is if you are a landowner or a dependent of a landowner. So just like with hunting. So if you go to your grandfather's pond, but you don't live with your grandfather, you're not a dependent, you still need a license. And that's if you're 16 and older. Oh, got one more question. My favorite fish to eat. Hmm. Mm, it's a good one. And we'll have to go with crappie. They're excellent tasting fish. We've actually got a nice picture of one right here, which gives us a nice segue. This is a crappie. You have white and black. So, so now, if you're wanting to get out there on the water and you want a boat, you can get you a nice one like this. So this is a kayak. This is a fishing kayak. 
This one right here, we are actually giving away. So if you already currently fish, and you know somebody who wants to learn to fish, go on and buy their license, take them out, show them how to do it, come back in, log on to the department's website, go to my profile, and you can enter to win this boat. This is a $1,000 kayak setup. You get this boat, this paddle, this life jacket, and two rods, and the new person you take off though gets a rod. So this is an excellent little package. We'll deliver it to you and everything. It's a real nice boat. So all you gotta do is enter online. You get a chance to win. We'll draw at the end of August. If you guys got any questions at all, can be found online. So, any more questions? Anything else come in? Okay. Well, guys, I think we've covered everything. Remember, if you've got any questions at all, consult the guide. That's an excellent thing to get one and stick it in your tackle box that you're gonna take with you when you go out. So hopefully, you've got enough of the basics to do what I call make you dangerous, where you go out and try it. And don't feel like you have to go buy the most expensive rod and reel ever. You just need to get you something to get you started. Most come already with line and everything and a little tackle kit to go with you. So that's all you need. Get out there, try it. Just have a good time with it. And I'll be answering more questions in the comments later if they come. So I hope everybody enjoyed it.